our guy Mark Ooh. says, what are the advantages, disadvantages of a ring radiator tweeter? Mm. Aside doesn't, from being hard doesn't the new say, Doesn't the new Polks use that? Yes. And yeah. I know Aaron's the man when it comes to that. What yeah. What is the purpose of a ring radiator tweeter? Mm. And, uh, and for those who don't know, it looks like it looks kind of like a regular tweeter, except it has like a pointy thing in the middle. Yeah, it's almost like? like it's got like a like a like a skinny pyramid in the middle of them most of the time. Yeah. So yeah, What's the I Hershey think kiss for what's the point of the Hershey? Yeah. Kiss so it middle? depends. So some of them are like actually part of the structure, and then some of them are put put there more for just like a phase plug aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that I know that are part of the structure are done to help with cooling. Um, mm. but then the ones that are put more for like the face plug aesthetics, so the face plug is designed to keep, uh, mode breakup or modal breakup issues like resonance in the cone down to a minimum and maybe even push them out a little bit higher in frequency. So that's kind of the extent of my knowledge. Basically it means that if you're a dome, you can cross lower all that, all things the same. And then a ring radiator is going to have less severe high frequency breakup. As far as directivity, things like that, it seems to be that ring radiator is a little bit more narrow. Um, but I don't know if that's just anecdotal or if that's actually true geometry-based. The thing that's weird about that is um, you also, with the ring radiator tweeter, you lose less surface area. So it's a little bit harder, I guess, maybe to get, some people say, you don't get the transients out of a ring radiator like you do a dome tweeter. But I don't know. I don't really know if I believe that either. But that's just something I've seen people talk about. But. Yeah, the main thing is just that the dome tweeter versus regular tweeter, you can cross a dome over lower, um, but then the ring radiator tweeters are usually better at handling high frequency because the breakup modes are handled better. So you don't hear all like the resonance and stuff in like the 10 to 12 to 15K region. All right. Yeah, the only one that I've ever heard were the Polk ones. So the Polk Reserve, mm -hmm. Polk Legend. Yep. And they did have that uh, narrow directivity that you're talking about. Um, yeah. a narrow pattern so it's right. like if you're on axis like you can really hear it and then the moment you move like, oh, where to go right well and they've been i mean ring radiator tweeters are really nothing new i think scanspeak actually put the patent out for that i don't know how long ago but it's been a while now hmm. oh, so okay. they were the ones who I, I believe it was scanspeak that actually patented that design and then other people have used it so polk has been using it in car audio stuff which i don't even know polk i guess they still do that but they had a, a higher line of car audio stuff that used ScanSpeak tweeters. Alpine did as well. Back when it was ScanSpeak Vifa, mm. uh, they kind of had that connection, I think. Uh, this is probably the mid-2000s, I'm, I'm guessing. But, SB uh, Acoustics, yeah. did they make one too? SB Acoustics, I don't, it's not the same shape, I don't oh. think. I think they had the in, – theirs is weird. Theirs is inverted, so it's like a nip, it's like an internal nipple. It's weird. If you look at it, that's what it looks like. It's so instead of like poking out, it's flipped inward. So it's, I've it's got one of weird. those, but it's only one. It's only out of three. 